awesome i think uh, we are live uh, hello everyone i i know some people are just joining in after uh, ending from the other session and you're going to see some people here starting to join in uh, but thank you so much alexander for giving us your time today i think this this has been i was really looking forward to this conversation because this is one of the only chats that i'm moderating at elevate and tally uh, and i'm really really interested to talk about this topic on event marketing uh when throughout the day we have been talking about the content world content marketing content creation uh and also about community building aspects uh really thrilled to have you for this conversation today yeah thanks for having me looking forward questions yeah. are going to be really really interesting <laughs> <laughs> uh you know when when i was thinking about what uh, are some of the things that i want to ask you um uh, i as an event manager marketer whatever you want to term it as was thinking about so many of my uh, operational processes and my behavioral uh, and psychological thoughts about every every bit and part of that process so it was really really uh, you know i had to deep dive into my own uh, self and think about uh, how i have been curating events and you know looking at uh, events in this whole content world and that's why i wanted to touch upon some of the aspects with respect to how uh, you know we look at at the empathetic value also and how do we look at this in a community building angle uh, and more like how we can connect to other other different human beings um and throughout the session and uh, throughout this chat i want to not like i'll, I'll keep my curiosity on and i'll make sure that uh, if some new sub questions or new questions pop up into my head i'll make sure that uh, i'll just throw it uh, in front of you and Maybe you can of give course. me some thoughts about that. Yeah, this is this why fireside chats is the most interesting format, I believe, because you never know what it will end up being about. You can have as many prepared questions, but the conversation just flows. So let's do it. <laughs> Super. Uh, you know, I want to first know from you. I think I've I've known very little through Ashna and and let's say on LinkedIn or Twitter across platforms uh, that I can see your journey, but. Uh, how did you end, end up and became like head of events and experiences at parcel lab like what has your journey been um yeah so professionally the journey started back in 2014 when i was really keen to get specifically into event marketing and i've started uh with a really big corporation veeam software and i was doing the their events for the german speaking region and then i moved over to semrush and it's been a really crazy and interesting journey where I also started from uh, managing events for the German market but then to cover the international one and then actually was building our own team and was in charge of running our international user conference and tons and tons of events all over the world it was absolutely exciting um but then at some point I realized that I actually want to go even smaller in the company size I actually want to try and build everything from scratch like get to the organization that has never done events or has done in a very like um beginner way so to say and build it up and that's how i ended up being at parcel up and uh, nine months going strong just wrapped up our first flagship event sons of webinars uh third party events lots of learnings yeah that's how the journey started uh back in 2014 and going <laughs> i i can i can totally uh, relate uh, and resonate with your journey it has been a little different because i've done that in the indian uh, ecosystem but but i can totally relate to it you know something i wanted to ask you uh, was because into all b2b events especially uh, not like the b2c or festivals or uh, events like that but when we are specifically doing uh, b2b events are we always like you always just look at the metrics uh, or you're also you know giving priority to the experience that you curate uh, how the chat moderation is going to happen and because now in the virtual world all of these things are especially important um do you do you just give priority to the business metrics over there or it's also something that you look at that no maybe i want to make sure that the experience for every attendee uh, should be really really important like I'll, to give you an example of this summit okay um mm -hmm. we had so many speakers and you know uh, a lot of uh, sessions and titles that we did not want to miss out on and in while we were doing that when we we were curating that 
we sort of missed out on having speed networking sessions which i really really wanted to host because i want people uh, who are attending any virtual event they should interact with each other and that's like very very important part for me but somehow we couldn't do it because of let's say a uh, uh, another priority for this entire uh, event what do you look at it as like do you, do you keep these things as priority so the way i look at it is that um business metrics in b2b of of course are important unless you can show the business metrics that are satisfying and ideally really promising for the business by the end of certain period after your event there is not going to be another event so this is you have to look at it but what i've also learned unless you create a great experience there will be no promising business metrics to show so these two things are so tied together that there is no way you can look at them separately and i would say these are organizations that clearly prioritize only business metrics that do not look at the experience the attendees get the experience the speakers get the experience even their team gets they only look at the metrics it's it's a dead end essentially so you can build up to the specific point but you will exhaust like you will exhaust your audience you will exhaust your database inviting them over and over again to the webinars that do not necessarily provide the experience that people want they are clearly just the part of the funnel and people know they are part of the funnel and know what's going to next no one's going to have next you're not going to get um, on a long term run what you want. So to me, it's really always important to focus on the experience. Uh, and also, even if you do not have as many attendees for the first time as you would like to, or you feel like, oh, we could do better, you can always do better. That's like the thing. But if people who showed up had a great experience, next time they're going to bring your, their friends. So that's the way I look at it. And I'm very big advocates for creating really this human connection and using events for creating memorable emotions and that's how i even like on a bigger scale look at what what's my mission like what's the mission uh, of my team with an organization um yes deliver revenue metrics of course but also to create memorable impressions and moments for people who have a touch point at our event got it and i think as uh, i'm going to ask you a sub question on this uh but but whatever let me complete my thought and what i was saying is um you know event marketing or in general uh, when you're doing marketing for a brand you want to build that emotion with your audience with your customers right like you you want them to have that uh, strong connect with you and i think events can do that in a really really uh, much better way than i think just like a newsletter or a campaign maybe or something of that sort a uh, small sub question i had was would do you consider events under the marketing umbrella or do you think that's like a separate uh, category for a particular organization or a brand in general i totally think that events should sit under marketing um reason for that because i've been on different sides i've been under marketing i've been under revenue i've been somewhere in between like when nobody knows where it exactly sits and i can tell you that the most impact events can make is when they sit under marketing and when they're deeply intertwined with everything marketing does and all of the events are part of the overall marketing strategy otherwise you will be doing different things instead of tying them together and today we're talking about events as a part of like at the content marketing forum essentially and events are a huge source of content they have always been a huge source of content but it's been very much underutilized things have changed uh when we all switched to virtual events and realized we have tons of recorded videos after that event what are we going to do with them oh we can actually use them because that here is a marketing team struggling to create video content and here is events team just sitting on all of this gigabytes of videos after the event not knowing what to do with them or maybe knowing but not having the opportunity to actually repurpose them prob um uh pr purposefully i would say uh so yeah definitely marketing and also essentially events are part of this huge demand gen machine and uh, the beauty of the event is that you can use it uh along the whole journey of your 
customer or of any person within your audience that you want to engage with, right? It can be the first touch point. It can be somewhere in the middle. It can be uh, already when people are your customers. And like the way you approach these events, you plan it strategically. Uh, you plan it all along that way. And like you will be using the resources of marketing team to improve events performance and vice versa, marketing will be diving into events um, to achieve some of the goals or to enhance the existing campaigns. So it's really, really deeply related. And yeah, so marketing for me. And uh, you know, talking about, you know, even marketers or managers or even leads, uh, whichever designation they fall under, do you think it's, it's always like a necessity that these these um, employees in a particular organization or this role in general requires somebody to be very extrovert or, uh, you know, these should be people who are great at their communication skills. Uh, what are some of the prerequisites, let's say somebody who, who wants to be into this space, um, not just with respect to right now when it's virtual, uh, let's just talk about when it was also offline. Uh, what do you think are some of prerequisites for somebody to, you know, be into the event space? Well, for me, I would say prerequisites are just being tough and being very detail oriented and have good memory. So these are uh, the most important things. Uh, when it comes to being like introvert or extrovert, I don't think that this is a definition of success because extroverts, of course, it will be easier for you to work at the booth at a huge trade show when you have to talk to like 1000 people every day and not being exhausted by the end of two days because you still have a lot of work to do. It's just like how, how some of uh, humans work and for some, they need more time to recharge and some people charge from talking to other people. So of course, maybe it will be harder for you if you're more in the introverted side. However, being uh, a good event marketer is not about standing at the booth all day and talking to people, right? It's about understanding what needs to be created that interests your audience at the right time, at the right stage of where they are. To do that, you need to listen to people. You don't need to necessarily talk to them. You just need to listen what they have to say. And you need to be able to implement that and somehow transform into a great experience. And this is where just being detail-oriented, being a good listener, being educated about how the world of marketing works, how the world of sales work, how your product works. So it's really being like very, I would say being an event marketer really requires you to know many, many different areas. You need to know how your salespeople operate, how your customer success, how your product people operate, uh, what you have to do um, to promote your product in the best way. So you really need to understand that tap into product marketing. You work close with brand. You want to make sure to showcase your brand in the right way. So you need to be aware of all of the branding side. So you just need, really need to be full-fledged marketer, I would say, but also have this passion for events. And in events, I mostly mean human connection and creating that emotions and creating those long lasting moments yet being able to tie them to, to revenue. So it's some sort of a superhuman, but it doesn't mean that you have to be an extrovert to be that. Got it. And do you think now, you know, with respect to this whole virtual event space, uh, do you think it's, it's easier uh, in the offline setup uh, to build these connections to retain uh, you know, brand recall and all of those business metric, is it easier in an offline world or do you think it's easier in the virtual world? So when it comes to really long lasting connections, I would be honest here. I think that nothing can replicate this in-person connections. May they be at events, may they be somewhere else, but just five minutes spent talking to someone and you will recognize that person a year later. You will meet again at the same event. You'll be like, oh my God, we met last year. How have you been? As if you're really good friends. Like if even you chatted and like saw that person chat on a virtual event, you know, a year later, you're like in the same chat. You're probably not going to go and hug each other uh, virtually. Uh, it just doesn't create the same connection. All of the tools that facilitate networking, matchmaking, I haven't seen the same power of them in the virtual world. And for me, my choice was focus on creating 
create content, deliver value through that, be very open and do not overpromise some sort of unique, outstanding networking opportunities when in fact it's just random matchmaking one-to-one or in always open breakout room where people potentially can go, potentially can meet someone, but they never do. So, and also moving forward, this is how I'm planning to operate using in-person events to really capitalize on the power of connection and, and the power of this magic that happens when a group of people comes together and what they can produce together and use virtual events to deliver the content that every person can consume on their own terms, may it be live, may it be on demand, um, but yeah, just differentiate between the value of two. Got it. And, and the reason why I wanted to ask you uh, this question was also uh, because now virtual events for whenever you're hosting virtual events, the content marketing and content in general becomes very, very important. Uh, not just for driving, let's say, business metrics for it, but also uh, to create awareness about the event in general, irrespective of whatever, uh, you know, metrics or goals you want to achieve via the event. But I think that that content play becomes very, very important. What are some best practices for you at Parcel Lab or for you in general, the, the past events that you must have hosted uh, or curated? What are some best practices that you make sure that, okay, if you are hosting an event, no matter what big scale of this is, it's in summit, it's a festival one day or just like a small webinar also. What are some best practices for content? Uh, like to give you an example, and I'm asking you and let me tell you from where, where this question is coming from. For me, it's more like, okay, pre-event, uh, during the event and post-event content promotions and awareness. So that's, that's how I divide uh, for us. But would love to know from you how you look at content for events. Yeah, so I guess the first thing with the content for the event is it's not an, a something that you will just launch on the page. It will continue bringing in people over some period of time. No, you need this content to be so interesting that people will come at that specific time and they will sign up and they will dedicate their time, whatever that might be, from 20 minutes to three days potentially of content. So you want to make sure that it's really different and it's something that is not yet covered by every other source out there. And the way you do it, you go and check it out. What is happening out there? You need to stay on top of the trends. You need to understand what's happening in your industry. You need to understand what topics are trending. and But what angles of those topics have not been covered yet? Or what people are so interesting within the industry that whatever they will be talking about, people will come to listen to them. This is like the first basic step. You really need to understand how you're going to differentiate and what new angle you're going to approach. And then the second, um, at least this is my practice and this is what I try to stick to as much as possible when I curate the content for the event. It's no generic conversation. Like Nobody needs to know, for example, in the e-commerce space that sustainability is an important topic. Like everybody knows that. Don't spend 15 minutes of your session talking about why it is important. Talk about what specifically everybody can do right now to improve on that. What's like something that people can really take away and say, oh, I actually learned something. Give some specific examples. Whenever I talk to my speakers and we prepare this content and whenever I curate the sessions, like, okay, what are the specific outcomes people uh, will be able to learn. It's even part of uh, my structure of a landing page for a webinar, for example. Here is exactly what you will learn. And there are three things that people can take away. And we make sure to always circle back to those things that we promised and make sure that we deliver upon them. So this is another thing, just because th this is some sort of a best practice or at least that's my practice. I would not pretend that it's maybe a best practice. Um, this has worked not really pretty well <laughs> so far, I would say. Um, and then, of course, how you're going to repurpose that. You want to make sure that content that you create can be repurposed afterwards. As a video, Like you you don't need usually this whole 30 minutes or whatever the session is. Like not many people are going to watch it, but you want to make sure that there are these short clips or as I always call call it, it's like Twitter test 
can this part be posted on Twitter? Like, is it possible to take this answer and put it in a tweet uh, and uh, kind of post it out there? So you have to have a few of those answers in there of this type that it's very clear, short, and understandable value that people deliver. And then you can also plan, um, of course, the way you're going to be repurposing. Will it be part of a ledger campaign? Will it inform um, something else that we are doing? Will actually this event create some sort of a content like co-creation with the attendees that are joining the uh, events if you want to use it as a user-generated content. So yeah, um, as it overlaps with what you're saying, like the pre, during, and post um, production of the post event, uh, definitely think about it with the distribution in mind, just like for any other content piece. Got it. Uh, something else I wanted to ask you, and you know, this this is with respect to when, like in India, a lot of organizations are hiring event leads or event managers uh, and, you know, people in that category. Uh, but when hiring uh, the founders or let's say the leadership thinks about what will they really do apart from, let's say, that one big event. Uh, and I, I keep telling this to people that hosting a summit like this or like a bigger festival as well requires at least like three to four months to curate it, to manage it, to plan it and all of all of the small small details into it so the entire year maybe just goes into two or three events uh, as such uh, but what do you what do you do when you are not actively uh, you know into a festival or into a summit like what what does your work look like uh, as an event marketer or like head of events and experiences yeah, I doubt there is time we are not actively involved in preparing an event. The thing is, after an event is before the event. So we wrapped up the our flagship summit uh, three weeks ago. The OX Fest 2022 is already under discussion. So, and it's a part of my quarterly OKRs to actually have the full concept dates uh, defined, approved. So that's for the larger events. Like it's a never ending cycle pretty much. Uh, but also, if you're part of the in-house team, which I've always been in-house, so I'm speaking uh, from this experience rather than for agency, it might be different, like from project to project. But then you don't run just one event. You have more or less around 40 events per year. Well, depending on your organization, can be more, it can be less. Like with a small team, uh, like we are right now, in total, we will be at around 40 events from very small, intimate experiences up to our flagship um, event. But that's quite a lot, given that there is also seasonality and we kind of started later in the year. Essentially, you have the first five, six months from February to June, then you have more or less a break for a couple months or maybe even just August. For us, it was just August, no events. And then you have all of your events squeezed in into two and a half months from September until the mid of November. So it's a lot of activities happening all the time and you're just in the mode of executing that, making sure that everything is followed through post-event and on to the next one. And we run events in parallel. We can have three events in the same time. Like you won't have that is if you focus on one region and let's say you are just starting out. But when you have to manage around four or five regions all over the world, then you definitely will be with events that run in parallel. And when mm -hmm. you have this downtime, so to say, usually it is December and July. So what we focus on is making sure that you analyze and reflect on everything what happened. When you go on such high speed, it's really hard to learn. It's you don't have time not to just learn about something, you know, all this nice things about self-development and professional growth. So you definitely want to catch up on that. Maybe read a book, uh, listen to all those podcasts, like just all the episodes at once. Uh, but you also want to learn and reflect on what you've done on all of those events, both analytics from the revenue perspective, like how did you meet all your business goals, but also analyze how did we perform? Did everything go well? Uh, what we could do better. We try to give it on, uh, we, we try to reflect on a regular basis. Like once the event is over, you try to host some sort of a retrospective with the team or at least write down your own thoughts. 
but the proper thinking and understanding how that affects your work for the next six months, that's usually when I take this downtime to like really go deep in it. Um, and then, yeah, I try to take a break sometimes and clean up your downloads and desktop from all the screenshots. <laughs> yeah. Screenshots, speaker images, documents. And yeah, I can't wait for December to come because I feel like my laptop um, can only last until <laughs> mid of November or something. Yeah, I, I have two more questions. But before I get into that, I just want to ask you, do you have time? Because we, I think we blocked it for till half an hour itself. Do you have of course. time? Yeah, of okay, course. Okay, super. okay, so I have two questions. And one of which was actually important. I was hoping uh, you would say yes for this question. Um, a lot of small brands, because the virtual event space has, like literally anybody can host a webinar, right? Like you just get on a Gmeet or Zoom call or Microsoft Teams. Or if you if you are a bigger brand and you have some budgets, then you could also use Airmeet and, you know, bring it up uh, on this scale. Um but what about the smaller brands like who don't want to put in a lot of money or effort also because in some cases um, like the team is not that big enough it's just a startup uh, but they want to leverage that connection building and you know the trend that that the virtual events is in currently um, how can a small brand or a startup really use the events uh, space in order to build their brand uh, without putting a big hole in their pocket? Yeah. So I would say if you're a small brand or just a brand without a big name yet, um, not super well known in the space. So what you need to focus on is actually this experience rather than the numbers. So if you're small, if you're just starting out, no, you are not going to have 50,000 people in your database. And the key source for event attendance is your database, is your community, is your followers. So people need to have the reason to trust and dedicate their time to whatever you're creating. And if you don't have that reputation and trust, it will be really, really hard to drive high numbers. So start small. And as I mentioned before, next time, they will bring their friends, they will bring their colleagues, they will tell about your event somewhere else. I have a great example when back in 2017, we ran an event for 10 people, but it was an exclusive experience. It was like truly one of the best, I think, events. And I would not even say just events for me that I ran, but like the experience with people that I had there for three days, it was just, we became really friends, like on a deep level. I know that I can reach out to these people after years uh, and, and we will be able to talk. It was just some, such a deep connection. And I know that they told the story about this event times and times again to other people. And other mm -hmm. people know that, oh, they created this amazing experience and they were so invested just on a personal level that they already kind of have the trust in our brand and they will want to come and experience it for themselves. So start small, invest in people, invest yourself, like be really genuinely and sincerely invested in making it a success in establishing these relationships. Don't just look at people as like, okay, can they buy? Can they buy now so that we can close the quarter and hit our quota? No, look at them as amazing people who have achieved something in their careers that you truly admire. Uh, or how interesting they are as people, because every person has something that actually is incredible about them. So that, that's how you should approach this event, in my opinion. And then the database and the community and the followers will come. Just don't expect the results right away. Yeah, and I think it, it takes a little time to build up that credibility with your audience also, right? Like to give you an example, I think, we started doing Instagram live sessions and smaller webinars and masterclasses of not more than 100 capacity. Uh, and when, when you used to keep the max capacity to 100, some 30, 40 people used to turn up. And now we do it like a full webinar uh, mode where 1,000 people can join in. And we have slowly started to see that the number of people interested into it has increased. Because over the period of time, we have built that credibility uh, and shown that proof of concept that, okay, yes, we, we are good at what we do. 
Um, exactly. And you were consistent. Like you did not yeah. give up after your first three lives where you probably yeah. did not have as many people as your yeah. CEO would like to have. You just kept yeah. going. And now yeah. you have 10K people signing up for the summit. You know, I think I see a lot of similar, and this is this was supposed to be my last question, and and I wanted to ask you this. Um, I see a lot of similarity between how the content space works and also how the event space works, right? Uh, like in terms of process, also like you need to be consistent with your content, irrespective if it's a newsletter, YouTube videos, it's it's a Twitter, any any platform you pick up. Uh, as a creator or as a brand, you need to be very very consistent with. Uh, what you do yeah. similarly in the event space if you if you want to build like an ip of a summit or anything like that you need to be consistent with it for years it's not just like you can build like this is the first time we are doing elevate uh, summit but we will keep on doing so that the credibility of it uh, with the entire indian ecosystem like increases over the period of years um but still what's what what are some of the best um, ways to you know promote an event through content like like to give you an example we have tried let's say live sessions doing like a pre summit smaller e events like you know a lot of brands have road to ad world road to uh, you know doing like a smaller webinars just before like a big flagship summit um and and you know newsletters youtube videos or collaborations with creators influencer marketing or even like youtube uh, streams but what what are some of the best ways to use content in order to promote your events is, is what i would like to end this conversation on i guess it's being creative and not following the same pattern as everybody else as you just said a lot of brands are already doing this road too so are you going to stand out if you just do the same road to this you're just copy paste essentially. Of course, if you copy paste and then innovate it and twist it around, that can be very effective. But anyways, I feel like not following the pattern is the key to cutting through the noise right now. Because what stops when you scroll uh, through LinkedIn, for example, or Instagram or Facebook is that oh, that that's something interesting. That's actually new. But if you keep posting, let's say. Uh, we are excited to invite you to our flagship. People are already gone because <laughs> they've seen about five of such messages out there. People, the companies create events all the time. Everybody is creating something. And majority of companies have pretty much the same description of their event. So that's uh, the first rule, I would say, of content for events. Just make sure it stands out. Make sure it's different. Do not use the words reinvent, reimagine, and reconnect as the most popular probably words that have been on the descriptions. Really, okay, what, what is it about? I feel like if you say right now, it will be an average virtual event where there will be no networking and only the sessions with the speakers, you will get more attention than if you say not an average virtual event, it will be breakthrough and you will be able to reconnect with your, I don't know, peers whatsoever, just because the, the it will be different. Yeah. Like you will yeah. really cut through the noise. And then of course, um, follow kind of, uh, I would say using the power of storytelling uh, sometimes we internally as event marketers, like we create the event and we're like, God, that's going to be so amazing. These speakers, they have such stories. They have such backgrounds, like their learnings are amazing. And all we do to promote it is say this and this from that company will speak on this topic. Does it tell the story of this amazing person? No, it doesn't. Why don't we try to make it a little bit different? And um, I feel like many people don't do it because there is certain level of fear of unknown because nobody has done it before at our company. No one has done it. I will be the first one. Well, what if it fails? Maybe it will, but maybe it won't. So unless you try, you won't know, uh, but you really need to have the support of the team. You need to have the support yeah. of your leadership to try something new and to be able to be risky with what you're creating. Yeah. Thank you so much, Alexandra, for answering uh, all my questions. I think uh, this gave me also a lot of new perspective as to how 
I look at the whole event space uh, for us at Pepper Content also. I, al- I was also seeing your people in the chat. Vinay is here, who's the co-founder of Airmate. Uh, so very happy to have him here in the conversation also. Thanks so much, Vinay, for joining in. Uh, but once again, thank you so much, Alexandra, for giving us your time today. I think this is going to be re- this. This is getting recorded, and once uh, like next week, sometime when we share this on YouTube. a lot of people will also be getting all of these insights who want to enter into the virtual event space uh, in india i think this is becoming very very interesting in the indian ecosystem so a lot of people will learn something yeah. out of it of course and i know we don't really have time to answer all the questions that have been coming in but everyone feel free to connect with me on linkedin just drop me a message i will be happy to chat with you afterwards that's usually how my connections in the virtual events world work so really open and happy to connect there super thank you so much alexandra and thank you so much everyone who joined this session thank you so much have a great rest of the summit